<laughs> That's pretty good, amen. Well, glory. All right, I want you to be finding in your Bibles, if you would, the book of 2 Timothy. 2 Timothy chapter number 4. What a joy it is tonight to uh, be able to ordain Brother Joey. I, I was thinking as I was sitting over there, hey, if you go into heaven, say amen. Yeah. I was uh, thinking over there about the men that have been called out of Blue Ridge View Baptist Church in the last uh, several years, and I kind of lost count over there as I was sitting there, but uh, what a joy to see that men are still being called to the ministry, amen? Still being called to do God's work. 2 Timothy chapter uh, number 4. If you found the place, I want you to stand as we honor the reading, God's inspired, inerrant, infallible word. Bible says in verse number 1 of chapter 4, I charge thee therefore before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall judge the quick and the dead at his appearing and his kingdom. Preach the word. Be instant in season, out of season, reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine. That's the day we're living in right now. But after their own lust shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears. They shall turn away their ears from the truth and shall be turned unto fables. But watch thou in all things, endure afflictions, do the work of an evangelist, make full proof of thy ministry. Father, thank you tonight for this good uh, soul-winning heart, uh, stirring music. Now, Lord Jesus, as we turn our attention to your word, Pray, Lord Jesus, as we give a challenge uh, to Brother Joey, give him a charge. Lord, I pray that each of our hearts would be open. Lord, I thank you so much for Crossroads Baptist Church, a sister church, Lord, uh, that believes that God has led them to call this man and his family. Lord Jesus, I pray that uh, uh, as we share from the Word of God, Pray, Lord Jesus, that Brother Joey would be encouraged. I pray he'd be challenged. I pray that Blue Ridge View Baptist Church would be challenged. I pray that Crossroads would be challenged. But, Lord, above all else, we pray that you would be honored. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Thank you. You may be seated. The chairman of deacons of a church received the following chain letter in the mail. The chain letter said, This chain letter is meant to bring you happiness. Simply sit down and make a list of five other churches that are tired of their ministers. Send a copy of this letter to all five churches on the list. And then send your pastor to the church on the bottom of the list. In one week, you will receive 15,625 ministers, and one of them should work out just right for you. And then it said, P.S., don't break the chain. One church did and got their old minister back. Amen? <laughs> you paying attention, Joey? <laughs> it's not always. It's Phil. I didn't see Phil. Is he here? Oh, there he is right back there. Oh, preacher, you better be in Sunday night church. <laughs> it's not always be easy being a minister. Matter of fact, this letter was written by Paul when he was in chains, if you will. The, uh, this chain letter was written to a young man named Timothy as a primer on pastoring. Th this evening, I want to draw some truths from the inspired epistle which sets the parameters for today's ministers as well. And what we're going to do is, if you just want to write down a simple outline, we're going to look at the who, what, where, when, why, and how. So that's our outline. And in order to make sure that, Brother Sammy, I'm not one of those uh, pastors that, are, that uh, are sent to on the bottom of the church list, I'm going to keep my comments brief, okay? Uh, just take a minute and write down some of these thoughts. Joey, as we ordain you tonight, several things that, that we want you to remember. Number one, we want you to remember who. We want you to remember who. A minister, a staff member, a, a pastor must not... Just think of his people and how to please them. He must remember who it is that he's really serving. Uh, I don't care who you please, Joey, at Crossroads, who you please at Blue Ridge View. If you fail to please God, then you failed. One man said, and I believe this, if we displease God, it doesn't matter whom we please. But if we please God, it doesn't matter whom we displease. 
Joey, you're not, you're not uh, uh, just ministering to please the WMU. You're not ministering just to please the deacons. You are ministering under the leadership of your pastor to first and foremost honor God. Amen, church? 2 Timothy chapter 4 and verse 1, listen to what Paul says. He says, Now the Spirit speaketh expressly, that in the latter time some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits, giving heed to doctrines of devils. That word charge, it, it speaks of a forceful directive. It's a solemn charge because God the Father and Jesus Christ, His Son, when we're doing this ministry thing, when we're doing this worship thing, Jesus Christ, God the Father, they are our audience. Amen? You see, you guys sitting out here in the congregation, now I'm not preaching to an audience. I, I, I'm preaching to an audience of one. Amen? When you come to worship, when our choir sings, when these soloists sing, they're not preaching to entertain you. We have an audience of one. It is said that Jonathan Edwards always, and I quote, endeavored to preach and act as if he had already seen the happiness of heaven and the horrors of hell. Joey, you will minister, and this is good for all pastors and staff members, but you will minister and labor in the presence of Almighty God and the Lord Jesus Christ, before whom the Bible says, every heart is exposed and before, before whom we will ultimately give an account. And so even though things are not always easy, there is a sense of majesty in the ministry. All of heaven watches, and all of heaven is enabling and assisting. Martin Luther said, I preach as though Christ was crucified yesterday, rose from the dead today, and is coming back tomorrow. That's pretty good advice. So, Joy, remember who? But second of all, Joy, you're to remember what? Preach the word. You've shown your gifts here at Blue Ridge View as an able communicator of the word of God. As an ordained minister, you are called to preach the word. That's not a suggestion. It's an active imperative because it's God's word that changes lives. Amen, church? Don't ever turn from it. Don't water it down. Don't be embarrassed by it. Preach and teach as if a person's eternal destiny hangs on your words because it does. It does. Preach means to announce. It means to proclaim. It means to set forth. It means to make known. You must never stop preaching the truth of the Bible. It is inspired. It is inerrant. It is infallible. It is God's Word to man. Joey, God's Word doesn't need a crutch because it's not crippled. God's Word doesn't need doctrine because it's not sick. It does not need to be rewritten because it has no error. No matter what your ministry position is, your calling is to preach the Word. Joey, if Blue Ridge View ever hears, and I say this humbly, but I say it also solemnly and seriously, if Blue Ridge View Baptist Church ever hears that you've quit preaching the undiluted truth of the Word of God, if you've quit believing that salvation is available to all men, if you ever deny the virgin birth, the virtuous life, the vicarious death, or the victorious resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ, I will revoke your ordination license from Blue Ridge View Baptist Church. And listen very carefully, if Crossroads or any other church you may serve, it, if it ever deviates from the Word of God, you ought to leave as quickly as you can. Your ordination council, because we believe in the centrality of preaching and the importance of preaching, we presented to you a wonderful study Bible, the David Jeremiah Study Bible. Use that Bible as you study. When Lyndon Johnson was elected president, he asked his good friend, Billy Graham, to take a position in his administration. And without a moment's thought, here's what Billy Graham said. He said, Sir, I believe that Jesus Christ has called me to preach his gospel. To me, that is the highest calling any man could have on this earth. Joy, if God's called you into the ministry, don't you stoop to being president of the United States of America. It's a high calling. Remember who? Remember what? But Joy, remember where? Remember where Paul's charge to Timothy is to be prepared. It literally, literally means to be instant or always on. You should be ready to proclaim the Word of God wherever you are, on the street, 
In the church, in a person's home, wherever you are, be ready. Whether you're counseling students, whether you're teaching on Wednesday nights or Sunday nights, or you're preaching for Phil on Sunday morning, always be prepared. I, I thank God that, that, especially this summer, when I was going through such a difficult time, I, I thank the Lord that you were always ready to fill the pulpit and preach the Word of God, and you did a tremendous, tremendous job. Listen to 1 Timothy chapter 4 again, verses 15 and 16. 1 Timothy 4, uh, the Bible says, Meditate upon these things. Give thyself wholly to them, that thy profiting may appear to all. Take heed unto thyself and unto the doctrine. Continue in them, for in doing this, thou shalt both save thyself and them that hear thee. Preach. The word, Joey, you're first, and you heard this from many guys, some wise preachers on the council a moment ago. Your first and most important responsibility is preaching the word in the church that meets in your home. You need to shepherd and lead Brantley. Shepherd and lead Bryson and Bella. They love you, they look up to you, and they respect you. So lead them. Joe, you're to remember when as well. You preach the word in season and out of season. And that means you're to preach when it's convenient. You preach when it's not. You preach whether you feel like it or not. That means to be ready when you're scheduled to preach or to teach and be ready when you're not. Look for ways to proclaim God's word in formal settings and when things are informal. Preach when people listen and preach when people look like and you're going to find this when it looks like they're a million miles away. Preach when it appears your students aren't listening and, and preach when they're hanging on your very word. And then fourth of all, Joey, remember why. Remember why. Go back to 2 Timothy chapter number 4. Look at verse 3. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine. But after their own lust shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears. And they shall turn away their ears from the truth and shall be turned unto fables. The reason why you are to take all of this so seriously is because the closer we get to the return of Christ, people are not going to put up with sound doctrine. Instead, more and more people will only listen to teachers who say what their itching ears want to hear. We see that happening in our day on a grand scale, don't we? Amen? Amen. And notice it says that people will gather around them a great number of teachers. There, there certainly does seem to be a great number of teachers who teach a watered-down gospel. And we could go through a list. I'm not going to go there tonight, but we could go through a list. The Bible says in the last days, people will gather these kinds of preachers around themselves. Joy, when you have opportunity to preach the full counsel of God, do it because people may not be hearing biblical truth anywhere else. So you take that opportunity. Uh, tragically, verse 4 indicates that many will actually turn their ears away from the truth. They'll turn aside to myths. We're living in that day right now. The Bible says in the last days people will not endure sound doctrine. Phil, Stuart, Joey, there may come a time in our ministry when our church or our group dwindles down to nothing because you are preaching the word. You are preaching it. Keep preaching. Right. And at number five, Joey, I want you to remember how. Remember how. Seven ways that ministers must, pre must preach. The first three are from verse two, and then the rest are from verse five in 2 Timothy 4. Uh, Paul talks about correction. As you share the word of God, you correct, you appeal to the mind, and then you rebuke, you appeal to the will so people will change their behavior. And then you encourage. You encourage them. Appeal to the heart. Let your students know that sometimes you have to share difficult truths with them because you love them. you got to give them straightforward counsel sometimes from the Word of God because you love them. But encourage them after that correction. Encourage them after those rebukes. And then he says, keep your head in all situations. Stay calm. I believe uh, uh, Michael talked about that. I believe Brother Tommy talked about that in the ordination council. Keep your head in all situations. Stay calm and settled when things are unsettled around you. Endure hardship. 
Afflictions will come for the minister of God. They're going to come. And then do the work of an evangelist, Paul says. Work. The implication is that it isn't always easy. It's not going to always be easy. But regardless of the circumstance, regardless of how you feel, regardless of what you fear, do the work of an evangelist. Share the gospel and draw the net. And then Paul says, discharge all the duties of your ministry. Leave nothing undone or literally keep on filling it full. So he says, correct, rebuke, encourage, stay calm, hang tough if you will, share Christ, do your duty. And notice verse 2. Go back up to verse (laughs) 2. Preach the word, be instant in season, out of season, reprove, rebuke, exhort. Here, Here it is. With all long suffering." And doctrine. You know what that means? That means with great patience and careful <clears throat> instruction. I got news for you. As you work with middle school and high schoolers, you better have patience. Better have some patience. You'll need great patience because there's still a work in progress. Keep on instructing carefully. Be patient with the adults as well. Amen, Brother Phil? Be patient with the adults because God has not yet finished working with them either. Joy, I want to give you some personal words as we close today. Just some personal words. And you heard some of these in, uh, in the ordination council. But, but I want you to remember, family first. Family first, and then your church. Ball games, recitals, uh, things like that. Things that uh, only happen once in your kids' lives. The church is going to be there. But Bryson's only going to be a teenager one time. Bella's only going to be a child one time. And there are things that you don't need to miss in their life. Don't sacrifice those times on the altar of church work. If, you're, if you lose your family but still have the church, you have nothing. But if you lose the church and still have your family, you've got everything. And, and here, here's what I've learned, especially when I was doing student ministry years ago. The church will let you work as much as you want to. <laughs> That's right. But I believe they'll also respect your family time. Amen, Crossroads? If your pastor gives you a day off, number two, if your pastor gives you a day off, take it. Take it. Learn, learn from my experience this past couple of years. Don't come to the realization that you're burning the candle at both ends when it's too late. Take your time off. Block it out. Make it an appointment in your day timer. So if somebody calls, you can say, I have an appointment that day. Number three, date your wife. Right, Brantley? Number four, date your daughter. Number five, hang out with your son. Take him hunting. Go fishing. And then number six, realize, and I've tried to teach all the staff this, but you're an extension of your pastor. You're an extension of your pastor. You don't answer to a committee. You don't answer to deacons. You answer to your pastor. You be 100% loyal to him. And, and all this is, is a prerequisite that he's standing firm on the word of God. You be 100% loyal to him. You back him up. You fight for him. You fight for Phil. You come under his leadership. You come under his authority, but you're 100% loyal to him. If there's a concern that you have regarding your ministry area or something that you think needs to be done, you don't consult anybody else but him first. You never want to give the appearance to go behind his back or over his head. You discuss it with him. Now, y'all may disagree on some things. (laughs) Y'all may have lively discussions every now and then. But you always defer to your pastor and what he wants as long as he's in accordance to God's Word. Preacher, why do you say that? It's because God has placed him as the leader of the church and his vision and direction for the church should be backed by you and backed by every staff member. And if you can't follow him, go somewhere where you can follow. Don't cause trouble. Remember, and and Phil, I know you've told him this, but always remember, Joey, what goes on in staff meeting stays in staff meeting. Okay? There's some things that just have to stay there. You champion other ministries and other staff members. You be, the, you be the biggest champion for the music ministry and the music director. You be the biggest champion for the, the children's department and the preschool department. You be the biggest cheerleader for the senior adults and the adult ministries. 
I've told you this before and I've told our other guys on staff, the quickest way to get fired is to talk about and criticize another staff member. Amen? We just don't do that. We don't do that. Champion their ministry. And then last, uh, seventh thing I want to share with you is this. And I, I've, I've said this for years. I'm going to say it again to you. That the main thing that's getting ministers in trouble today are females, finances, and fame. I told you this morning, just stay close and stay clean. I heard a preacher say that one time. You just stay close to God and you stay clean before Him. I, I want to thank Joey. I want to thank Joey for pastoring my two kids in the student ministry right here. Jesus, or, or Joey, huh, sorry. Joey... <laughs> Crossroads, Joey, Joey taught my two kids to study the Bible for themselves. He taught them to be missionaries. He taught them to serve and to do ministry. And they're fully devoted followers of Christ tonight, and, and Joey had a great part in that. Uh, young people of Blue Ridge View, I hope you realize how fortunate you've been to have Joey as your leader and your guide. How fortunate you've been to have Brantley by his side. Crossroads Baptist Church students, I hope you realize how blessed you are to be getting Joey and his family. You ought to thank God that the Lord Jesus Christ has led him your way. Matter of fact, we ought to express our appreciation to Joey and his family right now. Amen. Amen. Amen.